Does size really matter? The answer is yes. Before you guys pop off in the comments, we are talking web images today. What size should they be? How to see if they're slowing down your site? tools you can use to optimize and techniques to use when saving in Photoshop and Canva. But before we go any further, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Join me on this journey. I release weekly videos on web design, marketing, and content creation strategies. Let's get down to business. What size should your web images be? I'm talking actual file size right now. The best I can really do is give you some guidelines. There aren't any pixel police that are gonna come after you if your image sizing isn't correct. The worst that's gonna happen to you is that your site will slow down. I've built a lot of websites myself and I have some general guidelines that I usually like to stick to. When I'm looking at actual file size, I like to be somewhere at maximum in the 100 kilobyte range. Now that might seem small, maybe that seems big to some people. There's a lot of differing information out there on the internet. There's an article I found that says you should never do anything over 300 kilobytes, which I totally agree with. And you should never, ever, ever upload anything over a megabyte. If you are uploading anything web image related over a megabyte, we need to talk. It's really the same reasons why we would never upload a video file directly to our website. We're usually linking to streaming services like YouTube and Vimeo to host our videos because if we put a video that was hundreds of megabytes directly on our site, it is going to slow it down, it will take forever to load, and you will probably think that you are in the internet dial-up days. It's not good. It's not a good user experience and it's, going to turn people away from your site pretty quickly. With my 100 kilobyte sizing reference as a guide, I usually feel pretty comfortable with that because I know that I have additional tools on my website that will help with image compression. So I know that those file sizes can come down just a little bit, which is great. What I really wanna talk about next is what size, as in what pixel size, you should be using for your images. In order to do that, I'm gonna take you to my computer where we will check out some examples. All right, I am going to talk about pixel sizing for different images. The first thing that I'll say is that I am on my site, michellethecreator.com. I use WordPress to build my sites. I am using the Divi theme, so if you're interested in how I'm doing some of the things that I'm doing. The Divi theme allows me to adjust sizing and add things super easily. I'm gonna show you a beautiful image of my dog that I have sized at multiple sizes and I want to help you understand why pixels matter. And the other thing that I really want you to understand is that everything that you've ever learned about high resolution images and you know, what DPI they should be, what PPI they should be. They should be 72, they should be 96, they need to be 300. I want you to throw all of that garbage out the window because the only thing that matters in web images is the pixel size. A 72 DPI picture that is sized at 500 pixels wide is going to display at 500 pixels wide. A 300 DPI image at 500 pixels wide is going to display at 500 pixels wide. It doesn't matter what the DPI is, whether it's 72, 96, or 300, it just doesn't matter. And I don't want you uploading images that are 300 DPI because it's probably just gonna increase the file size. I always default to 72. It's just the baseline I use, knowing that the only thing that really matters in the end is the pixel sizing that I use. So, I want to start to show you an image. I have a page going here. I have a one column row and I've got an image that this is sized at 500 pixels wide. So I am showing you this picture as it is sized exactly as it is displaying. So as I can see, there is a little bit of pixelation going on. When you display an image at the same size that you intend to display it, it's not going to look great on retina screens. It's just not. And that might be hard to understand for some people, but you can start to see this image is got a little bit of pixelation into it. I can start to see the squares. It gets pretty crisp around here, but it's a little blurry. Now the picture was intentionally blurry in the background where the focus is more on the pillow and the nose, but it doesn't always look great. It's passable though. So I wanna show you the same image at 800 pixels wide. So same thing, 
things look a little bit smoother, you know? Uh, the quality might be just a slightly different, but things are in focus. And then obviously the thing is, is that it's bigger. It's taking up more space. So if you want to display something at this size, should you build it at 500 pixels or do you want to build it slightly larger? My go-to in this is I like to skew towards building things about one and a half size they actually need to be. So if you display things slightly smaller than what they're built, they're actually gonna look sharper. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So we can see that this is an 800 pixel wide photo and maybe there's a tiny bit of, of pixelation, but really it's not bad at all. And then as I go down here, I have the same photo. This is the 800 pixel wide photo and it's displayed at 40%. So if you wanna see that I'm not lying, I would show you in the sizing, I have it displayed at 40%. If I deleted that, it's gonna go right back to the same size that the other picture was. So what happens when I display it at 40% of its size? Does the file size get any smaller? No, it does not. We're still using the exact same file. It has the same size. We're just packing a lot more pixels into a smaller space and that's going to make it look a lot sharper than it actually is so when you're looking at things on a different screen whether it's a mobile phone because those have retina screens if you're using a high resolution screen on your computer it's going to look super sharp you're probably not going to be able to tell much of a difference on a non-retina monitor it'll probably just look the same but if you're looking to get that sharp image making things slightly bigger displaying them slightly smaller that is what is going to achieve a great image. And so I did one slightly larger. So I did one at 1200. I'm gonna click that, okay. 1200 pixels wide, again, you can start to see, I mean, they all got just a little bit of pixelation. It's just the same image quality. It's just slightly bigger. So it's taking up more space. So you can see how much, this is pretty much taking up my entire screen. So if I wanted to build an image that was going to be the full width of my site, I usually tend to lean towards 1600 pixels. And that's what this looks like right here. So 1600 pixels, it looks pretty sharp. I use that size as kind of a standard for any background images that I'm gonna use, which you can see that this has content over the background. There are some people out there that are going to be looking at websites on giant monitors that are like 1920 by 1080, super high resolution, and there's a chance that maybe your image isn't going to look so great on those monitors because this is 1600 pixels wide and the bigger monitor we go, the more we're stretching it. But I think those scenarios are probably few and far between and that 1600 is going to be pretty safe. So I wanna show you some of the file sizes that I was able to achieve with these photos. So I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna add a photo here. I'm gonna click this and then I'll go into my image gallery. So this was the first one. This was my 500 pixels. So it's 500 by 667 pixels and it is 36 kilobytes. So pretty small image. The next size up, we had 153 for the 800 wide, 187 for the 1200 wide, and then for the 1600 wide, which I actually cropped, so there's actually less picture, it's 133 if you're wondering why this one is slightly smaller than the 1200 wide. So by playing with different things, which I'll show you later, on the image quality in Photoshop, I was able to sort of target my kilobyte range into that 100 zone so that I know that it feels pretty good. I'm gonna exit my, I'll hit delete on this, and I'm gonna exit my visual builder, and we'll just take a look and see if anything changed from my visual builder to what it looks like now. So this looks pretty blurry. It's probably not something that I would wanna use on my website. Again, we got the same thing kind of going on here. This one looks pretty good though. I definitely think it, it's sharp for the size. If you remember, that's the 800 displayed at 40%. So I think that one looks pretty good. We got the same thing going on with just a little bit of pixelation for the 1200 wide. And then the background image at 1600 wide looks pretty good, looks pretty sharp. So that's sort of how I target images. If I know that I'm gonna do something full width, it's usually 1600. 
if I know that I am going to have a photo that is gonna be full width on a mobile screen, then I usually tend to make those at least 1200 wide. I mean, if it's gonna be pretty large, a lot of times I'm probably more in the 800 range. 800 wide is probably the least I will go in, in terms of width, just because there's I have a little bit more flexibility. As you can see, 800 pixels wide is pretty big. It takes up a large portion of the screen. So if I was gonna have something bigger than that, I would, I would use the 1200, which is the next step up down here. So that's kind of how I target my image sizes. Does that mean that this is how you should target your image sizes? No, not necessarily. This is just sort of the guide that I like to go by between 800, 1200, and 1600. Let me show you one other thing, which I'm pretty sure you already know, but what happens when you try to take your small image and you try to make it bigger than it really is? I mean, it's already looking pixelated and it's built to the size it's being displayed. So if I come in here and I choose sizing and I say force this to be full width of my column, it's going to look pretty bad. It's going to look a lot more pixelated and definitely something that I wouldn't want to use on a site. So just to recap, my recommendation is for whatever size that you are trying to target, just build it a little bit bigger than it actually is going to be displayed. So. If you want it to be displayed at 800, you know, maybe target something that's one and a half times the size. So one and a half times 800 would be 1200. So that's sort of where I get these sizing increments from with a max at, at being 1600, because I, I really just don't think it needs to go beyond that. So if you're uploading images like from your phone directly, sometimes those can be over 3000 pixels wide, which is huge and just like way, way unnecessary. So just be mindful about sizing and how you're building them and how you're saving them. Let's take a quick look at what kind of tools we can use to see if our site is being slowed down with large images. Right, the first web page that we are going to look at to test and see how fast your site is is a Google site, so it's PageSpeed Insights. I will leave all of the links of these sites in the description of this video so that you can access them pretty quickly. So all you have to do is you'd come to developers.google.com, speed, page speed, insights, and then you would type in your URL. So I am going to click the analyze button and hope for the best. So I will have two scores here. I will have a mobile score and a desktop score. And if I do say so myself, 96 is pretty dang good for a score. Usually you will see a lot of sites that are just terrible. And your mobile score, is, it's gonna be a little lower than your desktop score. So when you get this report, and we can see that we're in the green range, which is excellent. It's got some data that it's telling us. So the first, contentful paint, which means like how long it takes for something to actually like start loading, 0.7 seconds, that's pretty good. We start to get some other opportunities of, you know, what we might consider. I would say, please don't live and die by these scores. Like you will never get it to be perfect. You will never have a most perfect site. And if you do, you know, then maybe you should be filming these videos instead of me. It has a few suggestions for me to, you know, serve images in next gen formats. It's, you know, talking about instead of PNGs and JPEGs to use more WebP and AVIF formats for better compression, which, you know, I could totally start exploring that if I wanted to. It will point out some of the larger images. So it's showing that, you know, I have an opportunity to save a little bit if I could compress some of these images a little bit more but by no means is this terrible. And then, you know, it's got some diagnostic suggestions down here. So you can take everything with a grain of salt. It might help you identify some problem areas. So if you have some really, really large images on your site and you're trying to figure out which ones those might be pretty quickly, using a tool like this could be helpful for that. So let's take a look at my mobile score. I know it's not gonna be great, so let's just see. 42, not awesome. For whatever reason, it's just mobile. They just don't load as fast as the desktop. So I probably have a lot more suggestions that I could take into account if I wanted to really work towards 
optimizing my site for mobile. But just to be fun, just for giggles, let's just take a look at uh, like a mainstream site so that you can start to see what other scores look like. You can type any site in here. I'm gonna go with mcdonalds.com, because why not? So for our mobile score, we have a six, which is not amazing. <laughs> I mean, at least you could say like, hey, my, my site's better than McDonald's. Let's take a look at the desktop score, 66. So it's in the medium range. And they would show, you know, some suggestions of what they could do. Looks like, you know, images in, in next-gen formats and reducing unused JavaScript is probably what's holding it back the most. Reducing unused CSS. There's just a lot of, of things you can dive into. Again, don't live and die by all of this. This is just kind of a reference to point some things out that you might want to consider improving upon. There are other sites that will let you do speed tests and performance tests. So I'm not gonna go through all of those. I will just show you pretty quickly what those are. So tools.pingdom.com will allow you to put in a URL and you can test from different locations and start that test. GT Metric is a, another one that you can do. So you would just enter your URL there and then you could click test your site. And then webpagetest.org, again, just putting your URL in, hit start test. You can choose browser and test locations if you want. I will link all of these in the description below so that you can play around with these tools to get a better sense of what might be slowing down your site and how you can improve upon it. So if you use WordPress to build your sites, let's take a look at a few different plugins or tools that you can use to help further optimize your images. So the first one we're gonna look at is Imagify. This is actually what I use, and I'll give you a sneak peek at what that looks like on my site. And I always like to tend to, if I'm about to explore a plugin that I haven't used before, I like to look at the active installations. If there's a lot of people using them and they are pretty recently updated, those are the ones you usually wanna go with because that you know that they're actively being worked on and new improvements are being made continually. So other ones that you might consider, there's one called Tiny PNG, JPEG, PNG, and WebP Image Compression. That's a very long title. Again, I'll leave these links down in the description below if you wanna check those out. So this one has 200,000, pretty current. Another one would be Kraken.io. Again, 40,000, five months ago. You can use it for faster, better images. And then I know some people who actually use one called Short Pixel to speed up their site. Again, 300,000 active installations in last updated a month ago. So these are all options that you can install on your website and help with optimization. So what does that look like? I'll come over to my website and let's go to media. So I'm in the media tab and you can see that I've got this little banner up here says that I've optimized 635 images. And when I upload something, it'll usually tell me, you know, how much it was able to compress the image. And if there wasn't any compression needed, then it gives you a little well done. So you can kind of go through and see the new file sizes that were created after you uploaded them. So if I wanted to take a little bit of a quicker look into my settings, I could go to my Imagify tab. So we can see here that I've got different optimization levels that I can target. So there's a normal, I'm using the aggressive, I could go a step further and take it to ultra if I wanted to. I have some options if I want to back up the original images, if I want to optimize upon upload. There's a couple more about, you know, creating those, those alternative WebP format versions of images that I can do and then resizing larger images with a specific target in mind. So it goes through all of the different types of image types that I have and then gives me some, some display options for my toolbar. And then you can always do bulk optimizer. So if you already have a bunch of images on your site, you can, you can always go back later and optimize after they've already been uploaded, which is great. So it's pretty easy to use and doesn't necessarily take any extra technical skills 
to optimize the images that are currently on your site. The last thing that I wanna do is take you into Photoshop and show you some techniques on how to optimize your images when you're saving them. I'll also show you how to optimize your images in Canva if you're using that as a tool for your web images. So for the starters, I'm gonna come up to the file menu. I'm gonna go to export. And I love using Save for Web Legacy. I hope it doesn't ever go away. It's just what I've always used for probably the past 15 years. And if anybody says there's a better way, I would probably fight you on that, but I don't care. So what happens when I click that? I'll move that window down so that you can see it. I can see this is actually a very large image to start with. So this was an image that came from my phone. And so the current size of this image is 3,024 pixels wide by 4,032 pixels tall. So it's huge. I can zoom out just a little bit here so that you can see the image. Currently, if I were to save this as is, the quality is set to 55. So this is a 1.28 megabyte image. That's way too large for a website. So this is where I would start to play with these numbers down here. So if I know that, hey, I want this image to be pretty large, maybe I'm gonna opt in for the 1200 wide, which makes it 1600 tall. Well, I have it now down to about 273 kilobytes and it's at medium quality. So if I want that number to go down, I just need to play with the slider a little bit. So let's see what maybe 45 looks like. That's 206. If I wanna stick to my own rules, I would probably go down to 40 and that's where I get 186. So I feel a lot better about that size of image because if I am, again, making this image to display a little bit smaller. So let's say that my target was to display this at 800 pixels wide on my website, then this would be acceptable in my eyes for uploading and then compressing to get it down a little bit further. So if I know that this is gonna be a teeny tiny, you know, image on my site and I'm gonna be like, okay, you know, max 800, I can see that that's at 95. If I feel like I need to up the quality any, you know, I can push that limit. I could probably go a little bit further. Maybe we even go up to 70 and that's a high quality image and it's only at 187 kilobytes. So I feel pretty good about that. I think the quality would be nice. The other thing I wanna point out here is that if you haven't ever noticed or used this progressive check mark, I would suggest doing it. So the progressive means that it's gonna download the image in multiple phases. So when you put this on your website, instead of having one of those images where it's like downloading an inch at a time, you know, where it's just slowly loading the photo, it's gonna upload the whole photo. It'll be a little blurry and then it'll get crisper as it uploads. So it's like the whole photo is there. It just, as it loads, it'll get a little bit sharper. So that's what the progressive mean. Pretty cool option, so don't sleep on that. Once you get the sizing of the pixels to the way that you want them, and you can see that the target size looks good, then you can just hit save and then go forward and, and upload your photo to your website. Well, let's take a look at Canva. Okay, so now I have built an image that was 1200 pixels wide and it's 1600 pixels tall. And I have put my image in as a placeholder. So really the only options I have here is when I want to download it. So I'm gonna click the download button and I can see that it says suggested file type PNG. I completely disagree with that. So let's talk a little bit about what file types you should be saving in. I like to do JPEG. If you do not need the transparency, you don't need a PNG. I always would say opt for JPEG. You're gonna get smaller file sizes from that. PNGs are great if you're gonna use something like a logo, like if it needs the transparency. And, it, and going a little further, if you really want to reduce the file size, if you're using things like icons or you have a logo that can be an SVG file, which is a scalable vector graphic, totally go for that one because that is going to be way smaller. A scalable vector graphic is going to be able to be stretched to any size that you want it to be and the quality is never gonna be lost. It's always gonna be super sharp and they're super lightweight. So I always recommend if you can use SVGs on your site, go for it. If it has to be a PNG, that's cool. 
you know, if it needs to be the PNG 24, you don't really get those options in Canva. You would in Photoshop. If you can go down to the PNG 8 without losing any quality, then that's going to reduce that file size even smaller. So when you're choosing your file type, I mean, you could also do GIF files if you had animation. I don't really see any reason that you would want to use it if it wasn't an animated graphic. But if you're opting for web images, I would recommend JPEG. So I'm going to use JPEG. Sizing is at 1x here, which is the 1200 by 1600. And then the quality is where I can kind of play with this a bit. Again, I'm using the pro version. The free version might not have all of these options just because I can see the little pro crown here. So if I want to start to come down a bit, I can look at what 55, we could go 50, let's go 50. The problem is I can't really see what the actual end file size is going to be. I'm going to have to download it in order to find that out. So let's do that. So here is my downloaded file and it looks like it ended up being 153 kilobytes. So there's gonna be a little bit more of a testing scenario going on to try to target your file sizes, depending on how big you're making them in Canva. I will say this, it always exports these at 96 DPI resolution. You could probably adjust that for different document types in Canva, where if, you're, if it's gonna be printed, you would probably target the 300 DPI. But again, that only matters if you're printing an image. If you're printing it, it's gonna be a little bit larger than what it actually shows up. When you're in the web environment, whatever pixel size you make it is the pixel size it will display at. The resolution means pretty much nothing. Even though there are a ton of people out who will you know, die on that hill saying that it absolutely matters, it doesn't. The only place it matters is when you print the image, it'll be bigger. So just something to note, don't freak out if you're like, oh, it should be 72, it's fine. It's still a decently sized image, so shouldn't cause any issues there. So I think that's all I was gonna talk about. Now, if you have any questions on anything or you want me to explain anything a little bit more, just let me know in the comments and I will respond. I hope you found this educational and if there's something specific that you wanna see, let me know in the comments and I can film a video on it. Don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate the support. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.